So here we have the 3.5 watt, 465 nanometer bright blue PLE Pro laser from Jet Lasers. It took them about a week to build it and about four or five days to ship it to me via FedEx here in California. And it was about $290 out the door. Now this is a pretty nice laser. It is very, very large, like I would say unreasonably large. It's very long and also very thick because it uses the 26650 batteries, but for the most part, I'm going to be using the AC adapter, which is very nice, and we'll get to that later. For comparison, this is a 3 watt 445 nanometer laser that I got from bestlaserpointers.com for $150, and it produces a very comparable beam and burn quality characteristics to the PLE Pro, which again will be shown just slightly later in this video. So just some basic information about the laser. Uh, in the box that you see here below came the laser, the AC adapter cable, which is the first thing I want to start off with. I live in California, and they sent me a European adapter, so I had to go out and pay 10 bucks to buy one of these. No biggie, uh, but you'll have to do that if you live in the States. They also sent this little beam stopper or shutter thing to keep dust out of the laser. Um, so if you fire your laser up and forget to take that off, that could be a big problem if you do that a few times because it could damage the laser. It also came with two sleeves, so this laser can be run with 20, or I'm sorry, 18650 batteries and a few other odds and ends such as a key to twist on and off the safety. About that real quick, uh, the safety does have an effect on whether or not the batteries will work in the laser, but when it's plugged into AC power, as you can see here, it will run either way, whether or not that safety is on or off. So if you have children and you're worried about that, that is something to consider. Now about the laser itself, other than being very large, it is a pretty high quality build, very, very solid, rugged design, very, very heavy. Uh, ports on the bottom here, we have a safety pin port, which is non-functional for my particular unit, an AC in, and a smaller hole for some sort of other auxiliary feature that may have been in the design. This is nice, as you can see a lot of lasers are positive to the tail cap, which is pretty unusual for most consumer electronics that use batteries, so if you have someone who's unfamiliar with this, or forgets, that's a nice little reminder to put that in there. Uh, here we have a on-off switch and a temporary on-off switch, so if I hold that down, the laser would turn on, and as soon as I take my finger away, the beam would go away, as well as three little lights here indicating that the, the laser is ready to use. I'm not sure if those also indicate battery power, as I haven't ran this thing all the way down to its bottom of its battery yet. On the back, you see the tail cap just has the lock key switch there, and that's about it, other than the focusing mechanism up here on the front, and there's what the shutter would look like. Uh, quickly, I'd like to talk about the focusing mechanism. Uh, it is really nice that it has this marking here, so you can actually do some sort of mathematics with that and really set your focus precisely exactly how you want it. But I will say this focus knob takes almost no pressure. I could literally almost blow on this and get it to roll. Just barely touch that and it will instantly go out of focus. Um, not a very big focus change there, but if you're working with extreme precision, the fact that that rotates so easily could be a big problem for you. As far as the build quality goes overall, it's fairly nice. It screws together very nicely. The threads don't really bind or scratch or anything like that. And there are some pretty precision cuts, whatnot, all along the laser. I will say, though, if you take a look at this momentary on-off button, if I turn the laser upside down, it just kind of free floats there. And when I click this, I kind of get a little bit of a cheapo feel to that button. This one is a lot more solid of a click. So that's nice, but, you know, considering how renowned Jet Laser is for having, you know, the top of the line qualities and supposedly the best quality all around that you can find, I find it kind of cheapo that that will just fall out kind of like that. I mean, it's not going anywhere, it's just, you know, the little details. If I'm going to pay $300 for a laser that virtually has the same capabilities of a $150 knockoff, shall we say, I kind of expect slightly higher quality than that. Alright, so we've plugged this bad boy in and we're going to go ahead and do some beam and dot testing and we'll also add in the 3 watt 445 nanometer from Best Laser Pointers as well for some uh, comparison. We'll use an old surplus military ammo case as our beam dump. Alright, so I'll just go ahead and fire this bad boy up and I'll fire this bad boy up and I've focused both of these lasers in already. Um, to the finest point that I could possibly get on that beam dump. So let's check them out. You can't see much in this uh, kind of lit room with either, either laser. Let's spin around here, there we go. Until you get to about here, the beams really show up nicely when you're looking down the beam at the laser. Uh, 465 nanometer isn't too distinguishable from 445, but it definitely is a nicer, brighter blue, and that's very noticeable when you look at the dots. Um, something I've noticed about the PLE Pro, which you see there on the left, is the beam divergence on that laser is absolutely awful. 
Even at this distance, I have a tiny little slit, which is definitely not going to come up in this, unfortunately. But that is not a dot. It's not circular at all. It's a tiny little slit, rectangular slit, about an inch long, maybe an eighth of an inch wide. And the little 3 watt laser there is more of a square that's roughly a centimeter by a centimeter. So again, yeah, the beam divergence in the PLE Pro is pretty bad. Unfortunately, without a beam expander, that probably means I'm not going to be able to get beams out very far in the sky for sky pointing and astronomy, which is kind of what I really was hoping to do really well with this laser. Um, but, you know, food for thought. Alright, so now for some quick burn tests. The first thing we're going to do is a strip of electrical tape. And I like to put a little bit of tension on this tape, but not more than it would naturally experience hanging under its own weight from its roll. Because if you put more tension on it, it cuts faster, so that kind of defeats the purpose of the test. So we'll just go lightly through, and just like that, it cut most of it. There it goes. So now we'll take a piece of regular A4 white printer paper. I'm going to put that in front of the beam. And come on, baby. There it goes through. Not burning it too fast. You can see me shaking it around causes a big problem. And it lit the paper on fire. So we'll put that out and do a little bit more line drawing, perhaps. Punches through pretty quick and does start papers on fire. A little bit better than the 3 watt could do. Alright, so now I've turned the lights off so you can get a little bit better view of these beams. Again, the top or the left is the 465 nanometer beam. And the bottom, the right, the closest to the camera now is the 445 nanometer beam. And you can kind of see an example of that divergence there. After I focused the laser in for burning, um, that's some pretty gnarly divergence. Just at a distance of about 7 feet. So we'll come in here, and this will be hard to do at night. See if I can focus that bad boy in a little bit better. There we go. That's the max focus I can get it. And that is what the beam looks like there. Nice beam, I will say. Pretty color.